All right, here's my July 9th aquaponic system update. Uh, as you can see, I ripped off the Easter wall here. I actually just uh, unbolted. There's two sections to this one rail right here. And then uh, it's also cut in half. I just unbolted it, pulled off the outside piece, slid the old pieces out. So now the whole system, the greenhouse, it should be a lot more stable temperatures. It actually gets a nice breeze through there without a fan. And the uh, rainwater really still can't get in there to affect water pH or anything. Uh, I did a water pH test. It was a 7.8, so it's been slowly creeping up. It's honestly the first time I've tested it in like two months. It was a 7.5 the last time I tested it. Uh, so that's probably why most of the plants in there are not doing too well, except for tomatoes, which love higher pH. They usually like seven, seven and a half is their favorite range. Uh, strawberries are around six, so you can see why they're not so happy. Uh, I just uh, went through and weeded out all the uh, lettuce that had seeded out and a bunch of other stuff. I went ahead and cut off the uh, oregano because it was starting to seed out. It had still been flowering and it was bringing in bees and everything, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead, went ahead and cut that out. Uh, you can see where it's starting to spread out, sending out runners. It is in the mint family. Same thing for the, uh, the lemon balm. It'll probably come back out in full force during the winter. We'll see how this works out. But, uh, I just went ahead and threw down these seeds for everything. Uh, threw down uh, spaghetti winter squash, never grown it before in the ground or an aquaponic system. So I have no idea how to do in this new aquaponic system. But I put a few seeds around here and there in the green, in these raised beds, in these flood and drain beds. Uh, cucumbers, I put some SMR58s, salad slicers, and pepino cucumbers uh, here and there. I put just the pepinos down here. I just put them in these old salad things where the lettuce didn't do so well down here. Which, now that the walls are missing, this lower area will get a nice breeze. So I bet lettuce and stuff will do better down here. And if I get the pH adjusted. So that might be what killed this little peach tree that was doing good. <clears throat> Look like it got covered in mold. Uh, I also planted some moon and stars watermelons here and there. Just a couple seeds. And then a, a couple of uh, butternut squashes. Waltham butternut squashes here and there as well in these raised beds. And I also had a few seeds of this dark green zucchini left so I threw that in here too. We'll see how well this does. This is like the extremely cheap version so you get what you pay for. We'll see how this works out. Uh, I don't think I ever pointed this out because you couldn't really see it in my last video in the beginning of July. Which today is July 9th as I said. Uh, but this is the basil that I had uh, it was growing down there and then I just pulled it at the plug out and stuck it up here. So it looks like that's starting to actually do pretty well. Uh, here's, now you can see everything better. Here's the fig tree cutting. It's doing pretty well. Uh, the uh, bell peppers. Those were planted same time as this one and this big guy right here. So obviously they're not doing so hot. Uh, it might be the extremely high pH. Because I bet this right here has a low pH in this wicking bed here. Actually, I could stick a little soil tester in there. Let me do that real quick. All right, so I just uh, slid this little pH tester down in there. I'll come back to it in just a second. I did also stick some of the uh, watermelon seeds in here, like two there and two there, right next to the bell pepper plants because it's the only place I really water in there. Every once in a while, whenever I was using the uh, five gallon buckets to fill the system still, I would pour what was just left over in the five gallon bucket in there, just a little bit, one on each plant. Uh, let's see here. I was thinking about planting some watermelons directly into this gravel too, but I changed my mind because as you can see the water level is so much farther below the gravel, I'd have to plant the seeds way down there. And they obviously wouldn't have enough energy to push through that. Uh, I still had this really old bag of go Tibetan goji berry seeds that I'd ordered online like a couple years ago. I just sprinkled them right on top of the gravel here, didn't even water it in. We'll see how that works out. I did uh, plant like some cucumber seeds in through here, so I moved the gravel around. So hopefully the seeds fell down to just the right height where they'll start growing. Uh, that's about it as far as this goes. 
Let's see what uh, the soil pH is reading. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, it's reading right around 7, neutral. That's right next to the warm tower. I don't know where it's at. If I've left it in there long enough, I think she was leaving here five minutes. I'll come back. All right, so obviously this is, as I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the July video, uh, this is the time of the year to be doing your uh, softwood cuttings. Uh, so I really want to stick some down here. I do know that a neutral to acidic pH is better for your cuttings and obviously I have an alkaline pH, but I'm still, I think I'm going to take some peach tree cuttings, maybe some apple tree cuttings. And fig. And try to do some, get some real cool uh, cubes shoved in there with some, some new little cuttings and see how they do. Just, uh, just a little science experiment. And then may get some uh, lettuce and try to start it too. Now that we got a little breeze going on down here. Everything may still look like that in a few weeks to a month. We'll see. Alright, so it's been a few more minutes. I had to go change out my battery. It died. pH. Still reading neutral. Okay, so that's not bad. My other uh, wicking bed was reading uh, six, so that's good to see that it's still neutral in there. Most things will do better in neutral. All right, so uh, that's all I have for now. So I got three different types of cucumbers, zucchini, butternut squash, and then spaghetti squash, and watermelon seeds that I've thrown a couple here and there throughout I kind of I try to mix it up in case one only one of the all those types do well in here then it'll be spread out if I, you know I don't want to have everything growing in one spot and then have a bunch of other area that's not got anything growing in it and uh, the bell peppers are just starting to bloom out I'm probably gonna even though I took the fan out of here and it did free up a lot of space walking around pretty much done in here now I usually only spend like three, three minutes a day. I'll come out here and just make sure nothing is overflowing and there's food in the feed. Every once a week I'll check that. And I haven't had to clean that, that pond filter basket out since I built it. So it's been about a month. Uh, so three three minutes a day, just coming out here and looking. I'm not doing anything. It's been pretty nice. Uh, this system seems to be pretty working pretty well. Uh, this is the first, I probably spent an hour doing all this, taking off all those panels and ripping all this stuff out of here. Uh, I did see a lot of red worms and earthworms that we've been, we threw in here actually back when we first built it. Uh, so their population's kind of exploding, or at least the red worm population is, because some of those suckers are really young. So I know they're reproducing in here. Uh, I'm going to try to do some softwood cuttings in my aquaponics system today. I'm going to show you how to do it and hopefully it'll work out well for me. It's kind of an experiment. Uh, my pH in the system right now is 7.8. I'm tr trying to bring it down. It's supposed to be more acidic for cuttings, uh, but these are softwoods, so they're supposed to be easier. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, right here I have some uh, July Alberta uh, peach tree cuttings. These are uh, Luther Burbanks. Uh, it's supposed to be an awesome peach. Uh, the one in my yard has been doing pretty well. Uh, this is a contender peach. I'm going to try to do two of those. Uh, this is an, a dwarf everbearing mul black mulberry. Uh, these things, the one I planted in my yard, I got from a cutting online that was like this tall. It just been rooted when I planted it like two falls ago. And then last year it grew to about two, two and a half feet tall. Uh, this year it came leafed out. Then we had a series of late frost. All the leaves fell back off. The whole branch died all the way back to about this high off the ground. And now the tree is almost as tall as me. And it's got like, I don't know, eight or ten branches on it. They're all about like this. Uh, so I cut off some of the lowest ones. Uh, if you let it go in its natural form, it'll turn into like a large bush that just makes berries several times a year. I look forward to that. Especially since it'll hopefully be doing it when my other things, like my blueberries, and blackberries and raspberries and strawberries are all in season or even one of those are in season it'll keep the other animals off uh, and then I have some uh, Chicago hardy fig tree cuttings I've got one two three of those it looks like I thought I got four must have dropped it oh there's the fourth one 
Uh, I just cut off the branches that were way down in the understory. This is a young tree, and this branch that's an understory is going to probably slightly harden off before winter, but it's not going to be alive next spring, most likely. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to turn this. I go ahead and did the tree a favor so I can quit put energy into this and put it into the larger branches because it is a new tree. Uh, and I'm going to try to see if I can turn this into one or maybe even a, f a few clones. Same thing for this big one. And I actually may throw that in the trash. This little guy might actually work. I'm going to try to turn that into another cutting. Uh, I've got enough room in my lower wrap system on aquaponics to uh, grow 11 in these rock, rock row cubes. So what I'm going to do is just break these off and I'll show you what they look like when I'm done before I put them in the system. All right, after thinking about it a little bit more, I decided that the uh, everbearing black mulberry is such an easy and disease-free tree to grow and it could be so beneficial keeping the birds off my other trees that I decided I want to clone more of those than anything else. I got four of them. Uh, I ended up, as you can see, I cut the those two long branches down into multiple small ones. I uh, got the, the, yeah, so anyways. All right, so the, for the peach trees, I basically took those really long leaves and cut off the majority of the leaves and then took off all the leaves all the way down the branch and then shortened the branch to where, like, once it's in the rock wool cube, it'll still have room in the aquaponic system. Uh, if any of these things survive, I'm going to put them in a small pot next year in a protected area and let them grow in a pot and soil for a year before putting them in the ground. Uh, same thing for here for the July Alberta trees. Uh, the good thing about having a cultivar tree, you know exactly when it will bloom, what it disease it's resistance to, what the fruit's going to taste like, when the fruit ripens, all that good stuff. And then also if I do those four peach trees, I might have room for three figs. Yeah, I'll do three figs after that. Sounds good. I've already got two in the yard. All right, next update. All right, folks, as you can see, I did all the leaf cuttings, as I said before. Uh, for the peach trees in particular, because I'm pretty sure this is going to be the only one that's hard to uh, root from cuttings, whereas the black mulberry, or any mulberry, and any fig are known to be extremely easy to do. Uh, I hear that those little nodes that are right there in the armpit of each leaf segment is where the roots will typically come out. They'll also come out since this is a green cutting, softwood cutting, uh, that doesn't have that thick bark on it, which would be a hardwood cutting. Uh, you can have roots come out anywhere. So I also did that on the, uh, even the fig trees. I left a lot more leaves on it, but uh, the reason why you want to do that is so it doesn't dry out because it doesn't have any roots to support it yet, but it's going to be an aquaponic system and fig trees can handle severe drought. So I'm just going to let it go. And that way it'll have more nutrients that's in the leaf that it can suck back in to make some roots maybe because it's very expensive for the plant to make. And the same thing for the figs. They have small leaves, only small branches. So I just let them be. I just pruned off most of the leaves. This one has two, but the rest have one. We'll see how that works out. All right, I'm gonna throw it in the aquaponic system and I'll update you next month. All right, so here we go. I've uh, got the, uh, all the new tree cuttings, softwood tree cuttings set in here and the rock wool cubes. You got the two contender peaches. And on the back, you got the row of four dwarf black everbearing mulberries. And then here you got three figs. They're all uh, Chicago hardy fig. And this right here is your two, my two July pe peaches behind that leaf body. You'll see, you can't see them. Okay. So we'll see how they do. I'll, you'll see them next month. Uh, what I'm planning on doing this winter is all those single, single uh, pieces that came out of here that were only single layered. Uh, they all shattered when I took them out because they're pretty much drunk. Just like this right here. I'm sure if I push on this hard enough in my finger, I could shatter it. It's just PVC. I'm going to go online, probably on Amazon, and order some 1 8 inch thick uh, twin wall polycarbonate, just like what's on the roof here. That stuff has a 10 year lifespan, and it's drastically tougher. Uh, I'm going to put some twin wall in here, so it'll be better than the, the single wall as far as winter insulation goes and lifespan. And it should slide in there quite well. I'm just going to have to measure it out and make sure I get the right size. Uh, so that'll be even warmer in here this winter. 
I might as well go ahead and do it on all the sides. Here's the north wall that never sees the sunlight. See how nice and clear it looks. It looks brand new still. Uh, here's the fan. Went ahead and stuck the fan back in there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is I want a good hard breeze on those tomatoes uh, during the heat of the summer or humidity. Either one of those can cause the flowers to actually go sterile to where it won't pollinate and won't make tomatoes anymore. So if you have a good solid breeze on there, or if you got like an electric toothbrush and came by and just hit them all up and once every couple of days, we'll get better tomatoes. And hopefully still be able to get them during the heat, extreme heat parts of the summer and humid days. Uh, I'm just hoping the fans get enough because, well, I'm lazy. And the bell peppers are starting to bloom too, so I don't want their flowers to go sterile. I heard the same thing can happen to them. They are both in the nightshade family, just like the uh, tomatoes. Uh, the jalapenos don't seem like they're having any kind of issue with that, even though they were closed up here and pretty much not getting any fan blo wind blowing on them. Still keep getting them. Even that's a little pathetic looking uh, jalapeno plant, I still keep getting peppers off of them. Uh, for this uh, fig tree, I think I'll just leave it in here possibly, indefinitely. We'll see. I'll figure out what I want to do with that later. I wouldn't mind doing this all perennial beds up in here and then uh, during the winter slipping in some lettuce and then having my annual stuff hanging out down here and those two. And then obviously down there in that bed, except for the uh, passion fruit flower. Uh, obviously, I was gonna get some passion fruit off of that, and that's gonna come back every year. It spreads through underground rhizomes, and uh, hopefully, that whole bed will just overrun with them, and this whole wall will get covered in flowers and fruit every fall or every summer. All right, now stay tuned until next month. See you next month. Bye.